Well, good morning, everybody. Well, Happy New Year for everybody. I was wondering if I needed to dim the lights for some people, but I guess I don't need to do that for... But as we begin a new year, we begin this... I believe it's, it's, it's the greatest way. It's on a Sunday where we begin a new year. We begin a new life because that's what Sunday does. It renews. And every Sunday, in a sense, we're renewing the week. We're new, renewing our lives. We're receiving life in its fullest sense. And it's very interesting that this Sunday is the last Sunday that we talk about preparation for the birth or the birth of Jesus and little baby Jesus and all that good stuff. It's marvelous in its own way, but on Friday, we have the Feast of Epiphany. Jesus is 30, 30 years old. He gets baptized and he begins his mission. So in the Chaldean church, we don't spend too much time really dwelling upon. We had four weeks of preparation. And we have usually two Sundays after the birth, or because the birth, Christmas, was on a Sunday. So we only have really just the birth and this Sunday, and we're good to go. So as we prepare for the power and the glory of Jesus and what he's going to do and his teachings, you know, and the miracles that he's going to do, we have one last meditation on the life of Jesus as a family son. This is extremely important as we begin a new year as well. It's a good meditation for all of us as well. Because what happens here brings out something so beautiful for the rest of us. As we see Jesus, the God, the Maker, the Savior, is born to a particular family, lived in a particular, let's call it a subdivision. He knew who his neighbors were. His neighbors knew who he was. See, a lot of times we forget the humanity of Jesus. Jesus walked the streets like a little kid, like every other little kid. Jesus went to the temple and probably studied and talked and heard and listened, whether it was the temple or the um, synagogue. They went to the temple every year when it's supposed to on spe specific feast days. So we see this dynamic. And towards the end of today's gospel that we read, we hear that Jesus grew in wisdom. He was very also, very much wants to bring out that he was a human being, born to a family, spoke a particular language, was part of an identity of a certain people, was part of a specific family, was also part of a particular culture. It was real. Not just this thing that he's going to do. So with this reality of Jesus, it brings us into a greater understanding because the Bible wants to show that. It doesn't show for very long, but it wants to show that because now Jesus and the Holy Family become instruments of imitation for all of us. Jesus the good boy, with the exception of being lost for three days. With the exception of talking back to his mother when she said, where were you? But he wasn't talking back in a disrespectful way. Because right after that incident, it shows and it says, because Jesus had to maintain two things at the same time, his mission, as well as his life. And he was obedient to them, it says. Wow, God, is obedient to his creatures. It's unbelievable. But why? Because he also now has become a creature. And he's now the son. Now St. Paul in today's letter is very interesting. It talks about the family dynamics. And I don't know if you caught it. But he actually says that in every great house. And the word house isn't just this building. He says... In every great house, like a home, like a family. It's the same exact word. In every great family there are, in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, and a, but also some wood. So you've got your mother's fine china when there are special guests that come in. And you've got the everyday and once in a while when mom or you don't feel like washing dishes, you bring out the paper plates. And this is where you can just come in, eat your pizza, throw away the plates, a lot less things to, to, to worry about. 
but there are degrees. He says in every house there is a degree where some things are, are used for common things, and yet there's some things that are just great vessels. Now St. Paul is using this as an example for this house, for all of us as a house. He says in a great house there are not only vessels of gold, but some for normal, ignoble, nothing fancy use. If anyone purifies himself, he says, from what is the normal, because today's normal is not very good, what is ignoble, that he will be a vessel for noble use, consecrated and useful to the master of the house, ready for any good work. And interesting, he calls him the master of the house. Who is the master of the house? Dad. No. The ultimate master, not just the master, the ultimate master, God. God is the family man. God is the ultimate family man. And when you see the destruction of a family, you see the destruction of society. When you see the strength of the family, you see the strength of the society itself. So God wants to protect the whole society by first beginning with families. Beginning with your particular family as an example for the rest of the families. And not only as an example, but then you become a great member of the greater family. So how are we to do this, Paul? Tell us, because exactly the next line he says, here we go, shun youthful passions. He's not just talking about passion. Passion is good. But youthful passions, I think you know what he's trying to say. Well, you don't care about anything. All you care about is just having fun. Whether it's having fun physically, emotionally, having no responsibilities, whether it's on a physical, intimate matter, sexually, or just lame passion of kids. He says, let go of that. In a sense, he's saying, grow up. Be responsible for everything that you do. And maybe this is a good opportunity for us to look back in this pre previous year. What little silly dumb things that I do that I need help from you, Lord, and I need to ask for forgiveness. And help me, Lord, to be more mature this year, to grow and to develop. So shun youthful passions. Aim at. So it's not just shun. Aim at. Move towards righteousness. Faith, love, peace. Well, these are all good and important points that we need to keep in front of us throughout the year. It's easier to do it in the beginning of the year. I want to read the Bible more. Now that I've gotten a Bible, if I didn't, you can still get one. Now that I want to grow in my faith, now that I want to whatever, get one. We're starting with all these online things that we're trying to do with the Bible but there's so many different opportunities, so many different places that you can go and you can grow with all of this. Grow in faith, grow in love, grow in peace. Those who call upon the Lord a pure heart. Purify your heart, simplify your things. There's too many complicated things. Especially relationships. If your relationship with your mother or your, your significant other is complicated, something's wrong. Simplify. It may not be you. It might be the other. Step back, simplify. Lord, well, how do you want me to live my life simply? If you're dating somebody and it's too complicated, simplify. If you can't, that's the right time for you to leave. That's important to keep in mind. Simplifying your relationships with each other, with your children, with your spouses, with your relatives, with your friends. And here, oh, here's a couple of big ones. Have nothing to do with stupid senseless controversies. Well, you can skip that one. Everybody needs controversy in their life. We can all need to look into. Because the latest thing, because we live in a world today where we need to know everything and we have the opportunity to know everything immediately. Well, have nothing to do with stupid, senseless controversies. You know they breed quarrels. Interesting. The Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kindly to everyone, an apt teacher, forbearing, correcting his opponents with gentleness. That's a key. Hey, dummy, you don't know the faith. That doesn't work. That's not Jesus' way. God may perhaps grant that you will repent and come, that they will repent and come to know the truth. 
So becoming an instrument of God is basically what he's saying, doing it in gentleness. That's our New Year's resolution. That's our aim and that's our goal, to build, to grow, to love, and to be an instrument of God. So as we come together to worship, to thank God, to begin a new year, to have so much hope, to have so much blessings, to have so much change, to be able to let go, to begin something new. This is why we have seasons. This is why we have new years. Let's use it. Let's grow so that this year we can grow in a greater manner to proclaim and to praise and to always worship that name that is above every other name so that at all times we may proclaim and say, Blessed be the name of Jesus, both now and forever. Amen. A blessed new year to all of you.